three, two, one. And we are live in the present tense with Sam Stewart, 91 point center fan of WNJR Washington, and I'm live at WNJR.org. Hope everyone is doing well on this Thursday night here in Washington, PA. We just have two in studio episodes left of the present tense and the finale, which I will talk about in my Instagram post on Sunday. But we've got a great one tonight for y'all. My guest tonight comes from the men's lax team. My guest on the show tonight is a goalkeeper and field player from Kennett Square, PA. Everyone, welcome on to the show tonight. Riley Bullock. Riley, how are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you? Dude, I'm doing great. Excited to have you here, man. And look, it's a big week coming up. You know, you guys have a big rivalry game, you know, a great team in Grove City. So, you know, Henry told us they've kind of had your number in the past few years. So, to pull off this upset, what are the keys that the team has to do in order to pull off this upset? I mean, the biggest thing we have to do is focus on running the game plan right. Um, you know, merging as a unit, playing good on both ends of the field, defense and offense at the same time. Um, focusing on like our weakest points, you know, whether that's clearing the ball or just shot placement, like just, you know, focusing on improvements and, and focusing on like the, the chemistry together as a whole team. Mm. Now, for you, Riley, and you know, I, I want to talk about your journey to WJ specifically a little later, but like for you, you actually came in as a goalie, and this season you have to, had to step up into a new role. We talked about that in the hallway, you know, before the show. So tell us that story a little bit, because I think it's a really cool story of how you kind of offered and wanted to step into a new role that you weren't used to. So, why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, we were playing Muskingum. It was our second game of the year, and two of our key midfielders had gotten concussed. Um, Nate and Brad. Uh, and then, you know, after that, I shortly went, I talked to my coach, I was like, hey, like, I want playing time, um, you know, I'm not getting it where I want to right now at, at the goalie uh, position. I was like, and I see that, you know, we're down a few players and it might take them some time to get back. Like, how can I, like, help the team and also get what I want? Um, and I offered, I was, like, I was like, I can play midfielder or just like a field player in general, like, you know, wherever you need me. Um, and so my coach was like, yeah, you know, you can play midfield. Um, and so I was asking, I was like, hey, I just need two things. I need the elbow pads and the chest pads and I'll be good to go. Like I can, I can easily get a stick. Um, and I was, I was pretty much ready. So he gave me those things that I needed. Oh, wow. Um, and then the next day I started practicing at midfield. Um, I started off just focusing on like the defensive end, just playing short stick D maybe um, and working on like clearing the ball. Um, and then the next game we played Mount Union and uh, another one of our players got concussed. Wow. Uh, and then since then I was, you know, we got, you know, we've gotten all of our players back, um, but I just uh, kept with the role, uh, you know, cause I was getting playing time. I was, I was having fun. Like, you know, I was relearning skills, being able to, to play both ends of the field. Um, and then eventually my coach was like, can you learn some of the offensive plays? I was like, yeah. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> I, would, I would love to, like, you know, if you see that's where I can play, like, I would love to step into that role and, like, uh -huh. help the team out. Um, and it allowed for me to get uh, my first goal against Westminster. I saw that. <laughs> um, so it's it felt like a, like a crazy season, just being all over um, the defense, the offense more recently. And, yeah. So you said you volunteered to step up into some of those positions, and you said you had to relearn some skills. And you know, we've had KB from the women's side, Henry on here, just talking about, you know, kind of this unique position in sports, really, this, you know, position of lacrosse goalie, having to take those shots, you know, big net, you know. What was the transition back like? Had you, when was the last time you used a shorter, you know, field stick? So the last time I used a field stick, um, besides like over the summer and like some men's league, you know, just messing around with, with some friends, um, the last time I used a, a field stick was back in my freshman year of high school uh, when I was the backup goalie to that senior. Um, last time I like competitively played there. Um, wow. the, the, the transition was kind of different. I'm used to, you know, shorter, as a goalie, I was used to shorter sprints, maybe 10 yards chasing the ball out on a missed shot. Um, and just like explosive, like quick little steps from, you know, pipe to pipe or just like making a save and like exploding to the ball. Um, you know, switching to defense, I had to learn how like to like, keep running, you know. So was the conditioning hard getting back? A little bit, okay. Um, just like in the conditioning up, but also just like the defensive. Like once I do a little shuffle, shuffle to match the guy, like he's still running past me. 
I can't just stop because I've done my movement, you know, mm-hmm. where like as a goalie, I've done my movement, I've made my save, and now I'm looking to pass the ball or like walk the ball up. Like now I'm actively sprinting and like running with a guy, trying to make sure he doesn't get past me. Wow, that's awesome. And for you, like, what did you play like wall ball? Like what was the, was it difficult to relearn the skills, I guess? Like, you know, how, you know, you, you said you hopped in the next day. Like, did you feel like you were lagging behind the ball or all came back pretty quick? Um, so in terms of the throwing, like the throwing stayed the same with my right hand. It was just getting used to it in my left and like learning how to throw with my left because it was a very different um, skill level, mm-hmm. like a little different uh, in, in balance, right? Mm-hmm. My right hand was so much more dominant than my left because as a goalie, I've always thrown righty, made saves righty. Like the way I moved to catch or make a save was always right handed. So being able to like catch lefty, throw lefty, run with the stick in my left hand was significantly different than with my right hand. Hmm. Wow, that's, that's awesome. You volunteered to step up and that's really cool. So do you, which of the three do you prefer now, if you could have your choice? Do you still prefer goalie, offense, or defense? Which do you prefer? Um. So I haven't stepped back in that in practice since I've switched. Okay. Um. But I, I do enjoy I enjoy the field in general, so like if I was a two-way midi running up and playing offense and defense, or you know if I was strictly offense, like I would I would be happy regardless. Like I just I'm more in love with the sport than I am the position. Wow, that's awesome! It leads me right to my next question. It's awesome. It's like it's like you looked at my notes or something. When did you fall in love with the game of lacrosse? Take us back to that moment. Um, so I would say I fell in love with the sport two times. Uh, the first time being in seventh grade. Uh, when I first stepped onto the field, you know, my, my school made a requirement for, uh, it was going to be like my eighth grade year that you had to do a sport in each season. So fall, winter, and spring. Um, and to get used to that change, because I used to just play basketball my sixth grade year, my seventh grade year, I was like, I'll pick up lacrosse and see like how I like it. And I looked at the coach who was my history teacher. I was like, Hey, like, I'm just getting into this. I don't know, like, if I'm going to stick with it. Like, I know that. Mm-hmm. You know, and then, you know, first game comes in. I'm starting at the midfield. And I was, I was like, oh, like, I enjoy this. Like, this is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the second time I fell in love with it was probably my sophomore year, um, which was when COVID happened. Mm. Um, I had made the decision. I was like, I was like, I'm playing in college, right? I had made that decision up in my mind. I had talked to my parents. I was like, this is what... I feel like I'm called to do, um, and so I, I got committed to it. I was like, I was like, I'm gonna do club. I'm gonna, you know, work hard in the summer with my teammates, and you know, just getting ready to like move on to the next level. Um, those were probably the two times I fell in love with the sport. Wow, that's that's awesome. And for you, what do you think you specifically loved about the game of lacrosse? Like, what what was in the nature of the sport that really drew you in? Um, so. A few things. I, I love the physicality and the speed. It's a very intense game. Um, it's it's also a little bit of a game of finesse, um, and so I kind of like the idea of like like you know being able to not only just like run through somebody, but also just to like make a little move and sort of juke mm-hmm. uh, somebody out of the way. Um, other things is just like you know making a save that like you know, I love I love the glory of like being in net and like on a winning team or like in a winning game like. You know, making those saves that led to like the uh, the win and the outcome. Like, I lo- I love the glory and the attention that like goalie gave me, but also just like the the physicality of all the other positions. Wow, that's awesome. So, you know, with those kind of things in mind, those experiences, middle school and high school, why did you choose to come play for WNJ? Um, so I was looking at schools. Uh, you know, sophomore, junior, senior year. Like, where could I go? What places had like a lacrosse team? My high school never had a football team, so I was looking at, you know, schools that had a football team, so I could go and, like, sort of get that experience. I never got in high school mm-hmm. of those, um, you know, either, you know, tailgates or just, like... Well, you picked a t- school with a great one, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, seeing, like, you know, what a great student section would look like at a, at a football game. Um, so I was looking at all sorts of different factors, not just, like, the lacrosse program. Um, but I also knew I wanted to go, like, like a day's drive from home, mm-hmm. um, you know, I want to leave Kennedy Square for a little bit because it's a one by one, you know, square mile area. Um, and so I was looking at schools out in the Pittsburgh area, some in the North Carolina area, okay. New York, like all around. Um, and I reached out to 
a school out here, and it was actually LaRoche, and it was where Coach Golan was coaching before he came here. Oh, wow, okay. Um, At the same time, the former assistant coach here, Coach Perlman, had reached out to me, um, and, you know, over junior year, they had, or junior into my senior year, I believe they had made the, the switch of Golan went to here, and and Perlman went, I don't know where, um, but I kept in touch with Golan. I was like, hey, like, are you still looking for a goalie? Like, you know, there was actually a few other pack schools I looked at, like Teal and Westminster, um, and those ones I crossed off the list because there were a few that just had like more goalies, and I was like, mm-hmm. I was looking for a place I could like envision myself playing in the near future, but also being competitive with others coming in. Um, and I settled on WJ. I, I tore it out here. Um, and I, I, saw, I fell in love with the campus. It was it was small, but it wasn't too small. You know, it was a 10 minute walk from one corner to the other. There you go. Yeah, I've timed it before. <laughs> um, you know, uh, nice campus, nice facilities. Yeah. You know, the training room, having you know different trainers for a sport. Like it was, it was great. Like it had like everything. It met all my requirements. Um, there was a church nearby too. Uh, so I was, I was looking for all these different things. Wow. That's awesome. That's really a depth answer. I don't know if everyone's yeah. ever gave an answer that in depth of all the things they're looking for. That's awesome. And for you, what is the biggest advice you would give to a freshman starting their first day as a lacrosse player at WJ or Coach Gondon? Um, the, the biggest piece of advice I would say is, is be patient. Um, it, it takes time to get used to the, the increase from the, like in the speed of the game, like from high school to college. You know, a lot of people come in from being like the star of their high school team to, well, now everybody on this team was the star of their high school team. So, you know, it's not going to be like a walk in the park, but it's also, you know, it's, it's going to be fun, but it's going to be hard. Yeah. Um, but like also the adjustment of the shot clock, like that's not a rule in high school. Really? Okay. See, yeah. I never really watched lacrosse in high school. My the last school I went to, my last couple years, I didn't have a lacrosse team. So, mm-hmm. so that's a different thing. And I, I obviously talked to like some of the basketball team. That's a big difference too. So mm-hmm. do you, how big a factor do you feel like that is in the lacrosse? It speeds up the game a hundred percent for sure. Like it makes everything a lot faster. You have to clear the ball faster. You know, we have an 80 second shot clock and from, you know, us picking the ball up on the end line or making or getting a uh, ground ball or Henry making a save and clearing it, we have 20 seconds to get it and keep it over the midfield line. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so that means we have a minute to work with to shoot and score. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, to, to get that, to get, you know, everybody subbed off and in the right positions to set up, you know, maybe now you only have 40 seconds left. And so as a defense, you're playing the most intense defense for the last minute to you know, 80 to 60 seconds, trying to make sure that you're all set up, ready for their offensive plays to come and do whatever. So it's just intense on both ends because the offense, you're moving fast, defense, mm-hmm. you're moving fast, everybody's flying around. Um, shot speed and placement for goalies has picked up. Or like, as a goalie, like the shot speed and placement of shooters has picked up and gotten better. You know, It's not necessarily always going to hit you right in the gut it's always it might be more closer to like the corners of the nets so you have to move to make the save yeah it's so in lacrosse every time the ball is shot is it a reset or is it just that possession so the shot clock gets reset when it hits um actually there's a few things so like it gets the full reset of 80 seconds when there's a turnover okay right um but it, for the offense you get a reset if it hits the goalie or if it hits the pipe, okay, um, and and stays out. Um, so you win the chase out. You have another. You have a fresh sixty to you know run your offensive plays, whatever you want to do. And, yeah. Okay, interesting. Okay, so it's kind of when it hits the rim in basketball. Yeah, so that's yeah. Okay, I gotcha. So for you, another question: What fuels you? What motivates you? You know, obviously. You know, a lot of people come into college wanting to play their position, and like you might get moved out of position. But a lot of people don't volunteer themselves to be in a different position. So, what what do you feel like motivates you as a player, as a person? Um, that's a great question. I feel like there's there's a few things. Um, you know, a lot of my family, my dad and both of his brothers were college athletes, and so there's sort of I don't want to say pressure, but like there's an idea of like oh like it makes sense like there's a role like there's there's a tradition in a sense so like I want to go and like 
fulfill that and go and have my you know own you know career in, in college sports um but also just like um like my religion i would say like being christian you know doing everything i can for the glory of god mm-hmm. you know first corinthians ten thirty one. uh it's it's a big motivator Wow, that's awesome. Well, what what sports did your dad and his uh, brothers play in college? So my dad played football for RPI. Okay. Um, my dad's older brother played lacrosse, and he was a goalie at Guilford. Um, and my dad's younger brother played hockey at Cincinnati. Okay, Guilford, that's in North Carolina, right? Yes. Yeah, I played at their baseball field before, yep. like a showcase. That's cool. And you get the North Carolina connection because your your mom's from North Carolina. That's awesome. Um, so for you. You want to take this love for the sport and actually coach after. And, you know, I always ask people about their major, your business administration and marketing. So, how, you know, people might not put that together with coaching, but how do you feel? You have a really good explanation when we're talking about this. So how do you feel like those majors are actually prepping you for being a coach after this? Um, so it, it helps with a few things. You know, being business administration, you learn how to, how to run a group of people and how to be successful with that, but also with the marketing sense. Um, you know, the end goal is for me to coach at the collegiate level. Mm. Um, so, you know, with that comes recruiting, which means you have to market your school and not only your school, but also your team and players. Uh, so the marketing there helps with, you know, talking to recruits and being like, here's why you should come to this school, you know, be a part of our program um, and being able to stand out amongst others. So what's the difference between like business administration and business? I know you said like leading a group of people more so, but is it more like emphasis on like the leadership aspect, like talking about how to be a leader? Like what's the difference in those two majors? We had a lot of business people on here. So, a few business administration, but. So I would say for like the administration, it probably deals with a lot of like the, the back office, like the, the background workings, like what makes something function. Um, well, the marketing is just simply that, it's just marketing and sales. Mm-hmm. Now, my next question for you, and you kind of answered this a little bit, but already, uh, already but I'll, I'll give you it anyway. How do you want to be remembered at Washington and Jefferson College? Um, um, I want to be remembered as just like a team player. Um, somebody who showed up, went to practice, went to lifts, worked hard, encouraged others, like held people accountable. You know, I want to, I want to leave, you know, if I'm not like a captain, uh, by the end, I, by the time I graduate, like I still want to be remembered as like some form of a leader. Um, in a way that like people could look up to me and be like, oh, like he gave sound advice or he like helped me get better at this or he encouraged me to do this and yeah. Wow, that's awesome. And who is a character in your story who you feel you wouldn't be here in this radio studio, you feel you wouldn't be at this college playing lacrosse without this person? Um, there's definitely a few. Uh, you know, I, I could say my memo. Uh, she passed away, so I try and do a lot of things for her. Um, my my parents, you know, I, I love to just be like, yeah, you know, like you know, when I had senior night in high school, they were the first two I like went to after the game, like when we did a little senior ceremony. Like it was a very emotional moment, so I try and do a lot of things for them. Um, but as well as like my basketball coach in mm. in high school, he um he taught me a lot about how to be like a leader. Um, and how to also just play like a role on a team, like, and that's sort of why I was able to like want my tears because of him. Like, he he taught me positionless basketball, so you know I knew every spot and every play, and so that allowed me Whoa. to, you know, be able to play positionless in lacrosse. Wow, that's an awesome story. Thank you for sharing that. And my next question is, what is something in your life that you are proud of? Um, I mean, I'm proud of my commitment to come and play here. You know, when I when I made that that post, I was I was excited, I was happy. You know, it felt like the right decision. Um, so you know, many athletic like accomplishments I'm proud of. Um, another thing I'm proud of is I'm an Eagle Scout, um, and so to do that I had to make a project, and so for that I built a Gaga pit. Um, I don't know if you know what Gaga ball is. It's a weird, it's a weird game. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, I've never heard of this. I'll look it up. <laughs> but um, it's it's a weird game. But a lot of kids at, at my school love to play it, right? And my school was a K through twelve, you know, private Christian school. Um, but a lot of kids love to play it, and so I made that my Eagle Scout project. Um, we built that guy. I got paid, and I'm pretty proud of that because I had to I had to you know source all the the equipment. I had to do the budgeting. I had to lead a group of people to create this. 
Wow. That's awesome. Look at it. It looks pretty. See, they roll a ball and it like, hits another person. They're out. Yeah. That's it. It's pretty fun. And it, it is pretty fun. It can, it can get uh, competitive sometimes. <laughs> and you said you're also a counselor at the Y, I saw. So, yeah. I mean, are, are you, you like, you know, working that job? Or are you like a coach in that setting or are you more just like a counselor? No, so I'm just a camp counselor, you know, a glorified babysitter, something like that. <laughs> um, at least you're honest. <laughs> yeah. But like, I, I, I enjoy it sometimes. There are definitely days that are, are better than others. Um, but, you yeah, know, that's. It's just a nice little thing, you know, working That's with, awesome. like, dealing with kids, you know. Yeah. And speaking of service, like, the other, the other thing I wanted to bring up is something, obviously, you guys got rewarded uh, last year with the Team uh, Service Award. Uh, you know, you guys did a lot of work during the, um, you know, we talked about it with Henry and Paul, the um, you know, suspension of the season due to the mono, you know, outbreak on your team. So, for you, like, what has it been like doing those service events with lacrosse, and specifically, like, working with the uh, animal shelter that you guys did this fall? Um, I would say it's a lot of fun. It definitely provides elements of team bonding because, uh, you know, we get to take off a little bit of time, whether that's in the fall, you know, we're filling up some free time, just going over, helping out. We do all sorts of different things. We, uh, we either help with cleaning up some different uh, things or, like, there was, I believe it was Halloween, they had, you know, like little trick-or-treat mm-hmm. doggy bags where, you know, we had to pack a couple, couple different, like, biscuits in a bag, wrap it up, and you know, pass on, put it over to the side. Um, they did a Christmas tree drive where people would take like a little gift, bring back, you know, whatever that thing needed, whether it was like a bag of kibble or something like that. A couple of us went over and we sorted it out into different bins oh, and put awesome. it into different storage areas. Um, and then, you know, we usually get, you know, a few minutes when we're done to, you know, mess around and play with a couple of the dogs, <laughs> kids, you know, nice. whatever they have there. Awesome. So for you, I mean, you know, being in some of these leadership positions, whether it's like charity or on the field, like what are some of those lessons your basketball coach told you? And, you know, maybe not just that, but what is your philosophy of leadership? What makes a good leader? So a lot of things I learned from my coach and just from other things in general is like, is that lead by example, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, being at the front to be like, hey, like come with me and not a, hey, go do this, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um, being one of the first to volunteer, like, oh, we have to go work the Steelers game. Like, we need five cars. I need four other drivers. You know, and I'll I'll drive some of us over to Akershire and we'll go. You know, work concessions or, you know, hey, we need like three other guys to go to to the animal shelter. You know, being one of the trying to be one of the first to volunteer if I'm able if I'm able and available to go and do that. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. Um, that's that's awesome and for you what do you feel like you know what do you feel like your purpose is here you know at w and j like i've never really asked this question before but like what are things that you want to accomplish while you're here not just things that you're proud of now but like you know what is your goals here um, that's a great question, and I've I've definitely had this conversation with my parents too, and we've come to the answer that like I'm I'm still trying to figure it out a little bit, mm, you know. That's um, a good answer. You know, it, it's difficult sometimes to always see what your purpose is when you're in the moment. You know, sometimes you can look back and be like, oh, that's what my purpose was. Right. Um, so I'm definitely trying to trying to figure it out, sort it all out, pray about it too, you know. Mm. But oh, that's awesome. Great answer, yeah. right? I really like that. Let's, let's get to some fun questions now. Got to get to know people, you know, some of the fun stuff as well, too. So for you, Riley, what is your favorite musical artist of all time and why? Ooh, favorite musical artist? Um, I'm a big fan of J. Cole. Mm. I like his lyricism. Um, I like some of his wordplay, too. And it's just, I feel like he also has some really good songs I can just listen to on game day. And it'll just sure. get me ready for... For the game. So you know I'm a narcotic kind of guy. I was always a big. I am still a big J Cole guy. What what's your thoughts on the whole like beef between the big three right now? I think J Cole like he kind of he kind of his position kind of fell down a lot of people's minds. It, it, I would agree with that. Um, I, I think the whole beef is a little petty, but but isn't that what like hip hop is about? True, it, it is. But I would say I would say him coming out with the apology did not help his case. Yeah, I think the diss wasn't super strong. Like Drake's was crazy. Like Drake's was crazy. Drake kind of won it was like Thanos 1v20 but yeah I, I feel like J. Cole like, he didn't even say it. I think he's just like too nice of a guy like be the go 
Because I think Drake's like had a billboard that said hip hop was a competitive sport. Like I don't even think J Cole cares about me being number one. I feel like he just cares about like making music and yeah. vibing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like it, yeah, at Dreamville Fest, I feel like it was just it seemed weird to like see him missing. Because like he was even like because he called some of Kendrick's out. He called like uh, like to Pimp a Butterfly boring, which is not. You know what I mean? It's like I feel like he like just loves like Kendrick, and he didn't want to be like he was like you know I I do like his music, but. I feel like you can't, like, you got to be able to, like, battle rap, too, if you're one of the yeah. best rap. Like, I think Drake honestly won the whole beef thing. I would agree with that. That was a, that was one, that one was out there. Yeah, I feel like that was, like, the main, I mean, Kendrick's was, like, good, but, like, yeah, I really want to go. Have you been to the Dreamville Fest before? I haven't. I really want to go. I mean, obviously, we're always, you know, our sports are in the spring, but, yeah, yeah it's on NC State's game. All right, what's your favorite J. Cole album? Probably 2014, Boy Still Drive. Yeah, that's the that's the it's popular expensive. answer. Um, I'll be I'll be different. I'll say for your eyes only. I, I like that one. Yeah, those are the two best. Like the thing about Kendrick, I would say his disc choreography. Like to me, I think all of his albums are Like I think KOD isn't great. Like Friday Night Lights is really good. Um, the off seasons like really good. But I don't know if it's a ten out of ten. You know what I mean? Like right. To me, like Kendrick like has the best disc choreography. J Cole has the best lyrics. Like. Drake kind of, I feel like he's just the most popular though. You know, I, I would agree with that. It's tough. Like, the, I, I'm a big J. Cole fan as well. But do you like J.I.D.? Have you heard of J.I.D.? I do. Yeah, I like J.I.D. a lot. DiCaprio too is one of my favorite hip hop albums ever. The the Never um, the Never Story as well and the Forever Story. But I didn't want to cut you off. Go ahead. I hadn't fully listened to, to all of his albums, but I do like some of his. It's more popular. J.I.D. is more popular. Yeah, so. listen to DiCaprio too. It's really good. Okay. I'm sure you heard of Off These with J. Cole. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I remember when I first heard that song. All the guys in Dream, what are like Earth, have you heard of Earth Gang? Uh, maybe. They, you've definitely heard them before. If you listen to like uh, Revenge of the Dreamers and okay. those albums, yeah, they're, they're on there a couple times. Okay. Yeah, I love Revenge of the Dreamers and stuff too. It's it's good. Um, yeah, I remember Revenge of the Dream, Dreamers. Have you heard of a, a group called Spillage Village? I have not. So J.I.D.'s in them. It's like a like, kind of like a southern hip-hop R&B group very chill albums like if you like j cole's like chill stuff mm-hmm. you'll have to check them out their their uh their album end of days is really good okay. it's really good yeah yeah you have to check them out they have a um tiny desk thing so yeah. i'm sure you'd like that uh all right next question if you were a dj at a party and you had five seconds to put a song on the ox what song would you put on five seconds to put a song on the ox um this one has been overplayed recently, but it's it's so it's so easy. I'd probably say "Fiend" by Travis Scott. Yeah, that's a it's it's a quick go to, yeah. Yeah, that is a good. One. You know what's listening to that? It's been kind of overplayed. Is uh, "Breathe" by Yeet. Have you heard that song? I don't think I have. Breathe. Oh, <laughs> I have. Yeah, it's yeah. like a TikTok song. That's a good. Yeah, one. yeah that uh, no, that is a good. One. Didn't he play it like thirteen times or something in a row? The Travis Scott. Yeah. So, something like that. Yeah, it was, it was kind it of was a lot. Yeah, it's a good party song, but I don't know if I can listen to it 13 times in a row. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay, what is your favorite movie of all time, and why? Favorite movie? Um, that's a tough one, because I've watched a lot of different different genres, between okay. like horror and um, action and comedy. All right, let's hear it. Um, so I, I would say probably, you know, it fluctuates, but one that I do like to go back to is you know probably avengers just the first one the first one that's what uh coach uh when coach du bois was on the show last week that was his favorite too yeah i i think that for the lot of people that was like the first time they came together and stuff like the avengers endgame was five years old today did you believe that that's crazy isn't that crazy it just felt like that was like that, i feel like the period before the pandemic is like a different time that makes me feel old like yeah it, like, oh, dude it's because infinity war came out and then like I remember and when and that was like a moment, dude. Like everyone was talking about it, waiting for that movie. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just, oh man, it's just like I feel like that's the end of an era. Like they've still made Marvel movies, but like that was like the end of an era. You know what I mean? I think it's yeah. a weird feeling too. Like I saw this like thing on Twitter. It was like these like these yogurt balls. Like they used to have these for snacks. I don't even know if you know what I'm talking about, but like this the when the age when you start getting nostalgia for things is crazy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like. Like when you think about like event, like that's an old movie. When did that come out? That came out in early two thousands, I think. Yeah, like I was I was little. Like I didn't watch it till I was you know ten or something. Right. 
And it's like crazy too because apparently like the Avengers didn't even used to be big. It was like Wolverine and like X Men and stuff. Yeah. I didn't get in the Deadpool series. That Wolverine versus Deadpool. I actually never seen Deadpool. I need to check it out. Really? I, I enjoy those movies. Yeah, I heard it's like it's kind of comedy. It it's is. like funny. It's like kind of making fun of the movie itself. Like, oh, it is. He breaks the fourth wall. Fourth wall. Yeah, exactly. There you funny. go. Filmmaking term right there. Um, all right. So what about the other genres? I heard. Um, I mean, in terms of horror, I'll watch by anything. I I like more of the psychological horror, so like things Same. that make you think a little bit more. Um, you seen American Psycho? Things that just make you think a little bit. No, more. No, I say, have you seen American I Psycho? I haven't though. Oh, I haven't. it's good. Really, it's good. So what? You, I need to get like so. I, um, I don't. Do you know George Francis? He has his poster up there for the screening. Is a uh, he did the screening the other day? It was like it was really good. It was like kind of like I don't know. I'm not describing it. But like experimental kind of horror a little bit like. It was really good though. He did it with like a, a no budget. It was a really good film. But like, I want to get like this is like classic horror, like the, the Exorcist and stuff like that. Like, isn't there one that's like The Devil on Late Night TV or something like that that just came out? You know what I'm talking about? Oh wait, it's like The Devil on Late Night or something. I feel like I know what you're talking about. I I, I forgot like, the I actor. Seen the, the trailer for it. Yeah, I... but that sounds about right. Late Night with the Devil. Hey, M. Night Shyamalan has one coming out too called The Trap. Have you seen the trailer for that one? I haven't. So it's like these kids like get the kids concert and they'll get like trapped in. See, I feel like his horror, like Sixth Sense, you've seen that? Yeah. I yeah, like to that. me that, that kind of stuff scares me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what psychological horror is your favorite? I would say, have you seen Hereditary? Is that the one? Is it a Korean film? That's Parasite. <laughs> no, that's Parasite. Hereditary Here, is... Look it up. Um, it's this weird sort of like, I don't know how to explain it. It brings, it talks about like, you know, the seven kings of hell and like one of them is like coming to possess somebody. It, But like the thing is that there's not much to like actually scare you until, you know, somewhere in the film. But it's, it definitely messes with your head a little bit. Really? Yeah. That's, that's really interesting. I, I think it's not really a scary movie, but like the seven made me think like the, have you ever seen the movie seven? with Kevin Spacey and I have. you'd like that I think it's yeah. very psychological like I like stuff like Fight Club The Machine have you seen The Machinist that's another really good one see I you have me writing these down man you get, you get, do, really get your summer uh, get your summer you can go back and listen to it but yeah Christian Bale was really good in that too um, yeah but I, I like the, the movies that you know keep you thinking have you seen True Detective man you got oh I, TV I watched, my, my dad when I was growing up just showed me all like all these 1980s stuff to like oh, make so me cultured you know and like <laughs> <laughs> um, but like I do enjoy like because I'll still quote some of those movies too. Like um, like um, like what movies? Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> I'll, I'll quote that for sure. Um, you know I'll be quoting like the Mighty Ducks stuff like that. Oh, the Mighty Ducks. Um, Classic Sandlot movie. and all that. Sandlot. Is there some lacrosse? Henry told me about some lacrosse. Maybe it was Henry or Paul told me about some lacrosse movie. Uh, there, there's definitely one or two out there. I just haven't seen them yet. All right. Hey, you know what you got? You know what your homework is. I'm oh, yeah. you go home, right? Watch some movies. Yeah, it's, it's hard to watch movies during the year and the summer is really good. But I think you'd like True Detective and also uh, Mind Hunter. Have you heard about that? I haven't. It's a they, they, also Seven Fight Club, uh, directed by David Fincher. Okay. Um, I need to watch Zodiac, the Zodiac Killer. I heard that's really good as well. But Mind Hunter is about um, the behavioral science unit in the FBI, and it features um, actually the King from Ham. Have you ever seen Hamilton? I have. Yeah, so the king in the the live version of Hamilton okay. is actually one of the detectives. Like, it's about they start the behavioral science unit. They try to track down serial killers. It's really cool. Okay. And if you like, know, if you seen like Fight Club, you know David Fincher style. It's really creepy. Kind of right. leaves things open ended. Yeah, it's really cool. But you'll definitely have to check those out. So, my next question for you is: If you had fifty thousand dollars to start a business, what kind of business would you start and why? Um. So I sort of have a have a thought right away because I'm working with my best friend and one of my coaches from high school to actually start a clinic uh, back home for lacrosse. Awesome. Um, so I guess I would have to say like 50,000 straight to that uh, just to help with, you know, running out of turf field. Um, and eventually like the idea with this business is to not only turn it from like a clinic, but also into like a, a club program. So that would definitely help with, oh, wow. you know, getting gear and helmets and stuff. Wow. What's the name gonna be? Have you thought of that yet? Um, so my coach, his nickname back when he used to play sports was like Ghost. Um, and so the idea is just stuck with him 
Uh, and so it's like it's always been like ghost players or like ghost lacrosse and so the idea is probably ghost Ooh, lacrosse. Oh, that's cool. It's nice, like white uniforms. Yeah, that's nice tough. white and black. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. White, like white vase, black trim. Mm -hmm. That's so tough. Yeah. I mean, you have like the Snapchat, like, like a similar like Snapchat logo. Like the it's, card. Actually, it's actually kind of similar. We have, I think we've drawn up a logo and I can show it to you after. That's but cool. it is kind of tough. I like awesome. it. Awesome. That's really cool. Right, great story. All right. What is something in your life that you haven't got to do yet that you want to do? I want to go skydiving. Really? Yeah. I'm about to do that this summer. I got a coupon for it over over Christmas break. I don't want to do it because I have one more season of baseball once I'm done with baseball. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's a big thing people want to do. Have you, have you ever seen Impractical Jokers? I have. The one where Murr goes skydiving? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, yeah. But it's so terrifying though. But like, I I feel like I'm excited to do it though. But like, I feel like it's just that, that thing you have to do. You know what I mean? Either that or like bungee jumping. Like I just, Ooh. I'm, I just want the adrenaline rush. Ooh. Like, so New River Gorge, up in down in West Virginia. Have you driven past there? No. That's the thing. I, I didn't think you probably because for me, I'd have to drive up. You know what I mean to get to right. school. But they do a bungee day where it's called like Bridge Day. It's New River Gorge is the biggest river in the world, and it's uh, or sorry, old sorry, not biggest oldest river in the world. And so like they shut down the the bungee or the uh, bridge so you can go bungee jumping off of it. It's pretty crazy. I think it's oh, professionals cool. though, but like... They, they might let an amateur. <laughs> you know, yeah, the bungee jumping I feel like to me is crazier than skydiving, like... A little bit. Cause like the bungee, cause I feel like it's more free, I guess you're still free falling and skydiving, but... It, yeah. yeah, and like the feeling where you go back up, that's crazy. That, that can lead to some whiplash, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's, but look it up. New River, New River Gorge. If you get a chance, it's like a three-hour drive from here. But okay. um, yeah, wow. Yeah, also another great answer. All right, if you could spend a day with an athlete, who would it be? Any athlete? Any athlete? This is tough. Um, ooh. Are you still a basketball fan? I am. I Are you am an NBA so. fan? A little bit. See, I like NBA more than more than college, but a lot of people around here felt like college basketball because there's no NBA team. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, I kind of like college more just because I feel like there's still that element of like fundamentals. Like people are still working hard. Oh man, no, nah, I'm bro, you gotta people. go with this. I'm one of those people. But, yeah, at least you know. At least you recognize it. But yeah, um, <laughs> but for for a professional athlete, um, I'm a big Eagles guy, so I probably have to Ooh. say like Jalen Hurts, honestly. Really, you're, you're a big Eagles guy. So, what's your thoughts on the whole uh, Kurt Sirianni situation? Do you think he needs to win this year, or he goes, or do you think he should be given like more time? Or a lot of Eagles fans were calling for his, you know, his resignation last year. Yeah? I think he should be given more time because you know, if I had Doug Peterson two years after winning the or Super Bowl, you know, yeah, I mean, I feel like you know he's had a Super Bowl appearance and a couple of playoff appearances. Like, I don't see why get him out of here so early like if he's if he's making it to the postseason um yeah so are you a Sixers fan as well a little bit so they're winning right now they so are. they choked that you see the last game don't talk they about choked the dude game. what are you doing see that's the problem I feel like it's like when these guys like get the ball and fouls those like they expect to be fouls so they like, fell down like flop like they're called the foul they get it Dawson DiVincenzo gets a three gets it back gets another three and makes it all in like five seconds for making a previous three Insane. Yeah, it's rough. But Joel Embiid said they're going to win the series, so and they're up right now in the fourth quarter. That's uh, good to hear. Twelve. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. Right. So you're a, a Flyers fan as well. Big Flyers fan. Really. My uh, my uncle knew the equipment manager for the Flyers back when I was like I was like little. I was like eight uh -huh. or nine, and so one day my uncle comes. He's like, "You want to go meet the Flyers?" And I was like, "You're messing with me, right?" He's like, "No." He's like, "Hop in." So we go and we hop in the car and he drives us over to one of their open practices, and. I was one of the first back in the locker room after a few of their play after a few of their players like went in, and so I got to meet like Claude Giroux, um, wow, Tim Couturier, Sean Couturier, Tim, one of the I can't remember his name. I, know. <laughs> I feel so bad. Um, but I met like Braden Shen his first year on the Flyers. Like I got to meet so many of these different players before even like the media was able to come back wow. because of the connection. So I'm I'm a big big Flyers fan. Wow, that's really cool. Um, we in sports communication class, we've been I talk about brand management, designing like a brand, uh, kind of like you've been doing like drawing your brand. Like yeah. we're talking about like, but adding a professional sports league, and we watched a video on 
Gritty. I'm sure you're familiar with oh, Gritty. Familiar. Like, I guess it was like the kids liked him, but like the internet was like thought he was terrifying. But it was like the pig one tweeted something at him, and then he tweeted back, and it was like the thing. It, he's a funny mascot. Like oh, he's sure. he's one of the best. And then you guys got the. I'm sorry, are you a Phillies fan? You watch baseball? I don't watch baseball as much. Um, you know, getting big into lacrosse. The Phillies are. But yeah, the Phillies are something different. Yeah, they're they got a crazy environment going, and a fanatic. Like, oh, yeah. they got two of the best mascots in sports: Gritty and the fanatic. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Uh, we'll see what happens with the Eagles next year. Obviously, I'll just sign Saquon. Obviously, yeah. I haven't even. I we'll obviously got draft ends up tonight too. See who we get. Yeah, I'll let me look at the draft. Let's see. Let me give a little update for people at home if they haven't seen yet. Yeah, I just got back to the field. Didn't have time to even look at it. What time does it start? Eight. It started at eight. It started at eight. So wow, they're probably pretty deep now. I can't. I'm not one of those people who watches though. Because like, dude, it takes so long. Like the, fu- it's honestly that, that shows you the popularity of football. To be honest with you, man. Because like, here's the thing. The like, it's it's gone for days. What? Yeah, and it's a it's a guy reading names mm-hmm. for like three hours, and that gets more like more like views than like a lot of NBA games. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. It's so, wow, three quarterbacks off the board first. I'm sure there's some kind of stat about that. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, Caleb Williams, Jaden McDaniels. Jane Daniels and Drake May. Yep. So three quarterbacks off the board to start. I'm looking at ESPN stats and info. Let's see, I didn't even have time to look. Just get back to the field. We're loading up now. Mm-hmm. Let's see if they got something on this. No, they don't have anything on it. But um, yeah, Caleb Williams, Jane McDaniels, Drake May, Marvin Harrison. Let's see who your let's see who your Eagles got. Uh, I don't think they've picked yet. Well, think about it. the drafts been going on for almost two hours, and they're only halfway through the first round. Yeah. It's insane. It's insane. I don't like. Are you one of those people that does like mock drafts? No. Like, there's some people get like way. They do like mock drafts and all this stuff. Like, I feel like the draft is also like a point I like to make about the draft. It's also like draft picks get the fans fired up, but the thing is, like, you have to draft someone who's better for than the person you actually traded. That's always a given. You know what I mean? If that, Mm -hmm. like, oh, we got a first round pick. Like, okay. Yeah. Like, it's 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 more probable you're gonna get someone better, but not necessarily. Sure. Like, I think if you got one of those first five, like obviously like Marvin Harrison, that guy's gonna be special in the NFL. For sure. Like he's in the Cardinals. Like Drake May, the Patriots is really interesting though. It is because he could be another bust. Like Mac Jones, I feel like. Yeah. Because I, I I don't know the the Patriots they haven't had success since Tom Brady left, especially with the quarterback position. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jamie McDaniels to Washington Commanders. Like like it'll just be interesting. I think you know with Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels like. Jake Davis is an older guy too, but Caleb, Caleb Williams, like both of them go into situations, teams that work good. They don't have a reputation of developing. Like it's it's a lot of people's situation. I feel like you know what I mean. Yeah. Like you got like I always use an example of, of Baker Mayfield. Like he was in Cleveland. And I, I don't know how he's gonna end up in Tampa. Hopefully, he has a couple of decent years. Mm-hmm. Maybe win one more playoff game. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Maybe hopefully win another division title. But like. His play is clearly better in Tampa than it was in the Browns. You know what I mean? It's just a different culture. Uh, and I think keep that culture, who knows, because they got a new offensive coordinator and all, all this stuff in the NFL. But I think when you come to the league, you have to have a good culture, if that makes sense. Like, I was, like, think about it. Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady both sat a year. Yeah. So think about it. Like, I don't feel like it's necessarily like, good bringing someone in their first year. You know what I mean? Right. Kenny Pickett got him in his first year. Now he's really all, and he's never going to play it again. You know what right. I mean? Like, so we'll see. They might bring Caleb Williams in too quick. Possible. It'd be crazy if also Justin Fields gives off this year. That would be true. Yeah, but I don't know. It's a, it's one of those things people speculate all the time. You just really have no idea of how people are going to do in the NFL. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, another quarterback, Bo Nix went to the Broncos. He's a, these guys are like twenty five years old. It's crazy. Yeah, Michael Penix, Falcons. That could be yeah. good. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll have to see. So. All right, Riley, it's time for trivia here in the present tense. We'll answer trivia, and then when we come back, we'll obviously do the quote of the day segment. So your first trivia question for the night. Oh, boy. Well, you just have one for tonight, actually. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that didn't mean to overwhelm you. So, okay, to the indigenous, and of course, you'll answer this after the break, to the indigenous populations of many North American tribes, what was lacrosse originally called? A, stickball. B, field ball, or C, medicine game? We'll get your answer after the break. This is the present tense with Sam's front. I don't put to them. WJ Washington. Not online at WNJR. Not over. I have an idea of what it is. 
So I have so many different ideas because like I've I've heard medicine game before and I've heard stick ball, but like the stick ball is more Cherokee and that's in the South. So I think it's I'm going medicine game. Because I did I did like research on a project and said medicine game, but I also know it's like also commonly called the creators game too. And I was mm. like, there's so many options. There are so many options, but that's the what the majority of or is it indigenous people call the game. They were, there was a tribe that was trying to get the rights to like play as a nation in the Olympics, right? Yeah. What tribe was that? Padmasani. Okay, did they win? Uh, I think they're allowed to play, right? I don't know. Yeah, I know, I know the story, I never followed up on the story. Do you get a lot of crap for being an Eagles fan at Pittsburgh? All the time. Really? Yeah, you guys the especially, not like this past year, but my freshman year when they made the run to the Super Bowl, yeah. got so much crap for it, <laughs> and then they lost. I was like, oh. Dude, the thing is crazy, like the Chiefs, Defense was good, but their offense wasn't even that good. They just have Mahomes, dude. And they should draft like Brock. Well, I think Brock Bowers got drafted actually, but they should draft a receiver. Yeah, Brock Bowers got drafted with the Raiders, but yeah. yeah so, um, yeah, that's gonna be tough being a Philly fan. It is. Yeah, it's funny because they're in the same state, but they really couldn't be more different. Yeah, so different. Yeah, I looked at a couple schools near Philly. I was I looked at or uh, or Sinus. I've heard of like, like that. I'm I'm glad I came. I got I came here though. I like I feel like I like Western PA more. No offense. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I feel like Eastern PA has a lot going on. You know what I mean? Like there is a lot going on in that Philly area. Yeah, it's cra- trafficy and stuff too. You know what I mean? Like it's for traffic when they have a game. But besides that, it's not really too bad. Like you can get in. For... There's just so many bridges. Dude. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like it, if you miss your exit, if you miss your exit, you're screwed. Yeah. But it's not the traffic. It's just the exit. No, there, there have only been some times where I've driven into Pittsburgh and I missed my exit. I'm like, I'm like oh my god. Just, no, yeah. And you try to go the GPS. The GPS. GPS, GPS, GPS yeah. Every time it's like, oh, here's where you need to turn. Well, like, well, I, was about, I go to North Shore a lot. I got a buddy in North Shore, which is like, you take the far left one. When you're getting back off from North Shore to go back in Fort Pitt Tunnel, you gotta get over like two lanes in like <laughs> yeah. ten seconds. There's a <laughs> divider right there. It's rough, and you got people speeding through because they live in Pittsburgh. They're like, ah, oh, it's fine. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, it is. T- when you come out that Fort Pitt bridge, Fort Pitt bridge, you better know what you're doing, man. Yeah, because if you don't, you're you're going so you're going to downtown. You're going to Oakland. Because really, you go downtown North Shore or um, to Pitt's campus, and they are not close to each other. You can't just drive there. You have to go back on the highway. Yeah. 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 It's definitely a quarterback heavy draft. It It'll is. be interesting to see what happens. Dude, it takes so long to walk. It's like an event, dude. I just, yeah. I just think about two hours for fifteen picks. Is you get like everyone like analyzing it. I feel like some of that stuff's kind of redundant. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. you don't know. Yeah. I can't watch that for three hours. No, I can't. I'll check the next day. At least, at least the NBA is just like one night. It's two two rounds. What is it? How many rounds is it in NFL? Seven? I believe it's seven. Baseball's like 40. It's crazy. That's a lot. We are back in the present tense on 91.7 of them. WJ Washington. And online at WNJR. Dot org. Hope everyone is doing well on this Thursday night here in Washington, PA. Today, Riley Bullock is during the show. Before the break, we asked Riley his question. To the majority of indigenous uh, people in North America, what was lacrosse originally called? A, stickball, B, football, or C, medicine game? I'm going to have to go with stickball. Ooh, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. It's, it's medicine, medicine game. Because it was healing to the spirit. Yep. Do you feel healed when you play the cross? I do. It feels yeah. like, you know, if I've had a bad day, I'll go, I'll hit the wall, I'll shoot on the net. Um, it feels like very relaxing, de-stressing. Yeah. But it, also, it can also cause its own stresses too, <laughs> at, at the NCAA level at least. For sure. And I think all sports kind of have that, in a way they are like medicine, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Healthy for this whole competitive, allows you to get your frustration. So that's an answer I've heard a lot on here. So. Yeah. Right, listen, man, this has been a really fun show tonight, and I think this is the perfect place to go ahead and wrap it up and ask you to take us home for the quote of the day. So the quote of the day comes from my memo, um, and she always called it the seven Ps, and it is proper prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. Wow, can you run that back for us? <laughs> proper prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. Wow. The seven Ps. There you go. It's a That's, great life lesson. Yeah, it is a great life lesson. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. And dude, look, awesome story you brought here tonight about, you know, 
volunteering to play this different position you hadn't played in a while and just all the insights you shared from that i think everyone can take something away from that story and once again thank you again for coming on the show tonight it's been a lot of fun and good luck this upcoming saturday and the rest of your career here at wj thank you and thank you for having me yeah no worries man i'm glad we could get you in we got just one episode left in studio of the present tense details will come on that on sunday so make sure you check out the instagram at the present tense wnj that's at the present tense wnjr big announcement coming on sunday about the final week but until then everyone have a great night remember to live in the present tense